Hey guys, Mac here. In this video, we are going to be taking you on a tour of the four-wheel camper slide-in Granby. The Granby is the largest camper that four-wheel camper offers, uh, and that is based on the truck bed length. I will not be commenting on the truck, but just for your reference, it is on a Ram 3500 heavy duty. And I think that we have been in this camper now traveling for the last two weeks, and we kind of wanted to give you a basic overview tour of the camper and then at the end we'll kind of talk you through some of the things that we've noticed about it in our time in it. Like all four-wheel campers, it is a pop-up. The pop-ups are nice because you get a low center of gravity while you're driving, but then when you're at camp, you get your full standing height. The top is secured in the down position using six different latches, two on the front, one on each side, and two on the back for the slide-ins. Starting on the passenger side of the truck, we'll start ourselves by the cab and work our way to the back. Up above me is a Fiamma awning. The Fiamma awnings are super easy to use. They come with the crank that's on the inside of the camper. It only takes a single person to deploy it. They're really good for adding shade on hot days, uh, which does inevitably make it cooler in the camper, which then goes on to using less power for cooling the refrigerator and the space. Right here is an LED light. It's really nice for when you get to camp at night. You can flick it on and you can help yourself get your leveled and situated at camp. The large exterior window on this particular one, as well as an amber light, which is really nice for not attracting bugs or ruining your night vision. Over here on the driver side of the camper, we typically will refer to this side as the camper as the utility side because a lot of the utilities in the camper are on this side. But we will start here and work our way towards the back. Another LED light, uh, a very adorable tiny openable window. This is the exhaust for the hot water heater. Water fill for your water tank, which there's a 20 gallon tank in this guy. Uh, the drain for the sink. This is going to be your hookup for a shower and because there's a hot water heater in here, you can have hot or cold water for your outdoor shower. This is a wet storage compartment. Really, really cool feature. You open it up, it's an entirely self-contained unit. So if you have any dirty, wet stuff, it can go in there, be self-contained and you don't have to worry about it getting on anything else. And this is the heater exhaust shore power plug and then this is going to be the exhaust in the back side of the refrigerator that's located on the inside of the camper standing here at the back of the slide-in camper is the rear entry i will say that all slide-in campers do have this rear entry door and they have a standard regular door and then on the inside there's a screen door great for not letting the bugs in uh, if you're in buggy scenarios but starting on this side is an aluminous rack with a axe and shovel super handy for you know poo patrol and stuff like that uh well, there's also steps for accessing the top of the camper there's one here and two over on that side as well as a amber light again for the bugs and then on this side of the camper is the propane cabinet home to two 10 pound propane tanks fastened in nicely with a cute little seat belt so they don't get bounced around everywhere as well as a solar plug so you can plug in if you have a portable panel of any kind such as a bug out great for additional power when you're out on the road now that we're done with the exterior we're going to be moving inside but before we do i'm going to talk about these steps these steps do hook into the trailer hitch as an option great because you can take them off when you're driving so you can still get your clearance back here all right let's head inside Starting with the driver's side of the camper, I call this the kitchen side because most of the kitchen utilities are all located on this side. But right next to me is an adorable little nook with a cute little window that we saw on the outside. It does have the ability to open with a screen, but the screen also can be opened if you so desire. Uh, okay, starting right here in the cabinets, we have the thermostat for the furnace, which is great. If it's cold, you can warm it up and a switch for the hot water heater of which I mentioned on the outside and your fresh water and battery monitor. Then the cabinet is full of a bunch of different compartments that are made up of both storage 
as well as utilities, easily accessible, just, you know, if you ever need to access those sorts of things. Drawers and cabinets are kind of all through here. This is your solar monitor. This particular camper has two 79 amp hour AGM batteries and a 160 watt overland solar panel on the roof. On the top of the counter here, we also have a sink and a two burner stove. On the far side of the kitchen towards the back of the camper, aka the tailgate, we have some more utilities. We have 120 volt plugs. Those are gonna be if you're plugged into shore power only. And then we have our 12 volt and USBs. Those run off of your house power and you can use them at any time. Then we have our heater and all of our accessory lighting switches down here. So that's gonna be your exterior lighting that we saw out there as well as some interior down lighting. Really handy if it's dark, you can just flip it on, you can see what you're doing in here, uh, as well as a copper carbon monoxide detector. Safety first. And this is Levi, by the way. By the rear exterior door is the refrigerator and a really nice counter space for getting stuff up and off the floor. Now facing the front of the truck and the front of the camper is the bed. We've been sleeping in its smallest form, sleeping side to side, but it does have the ability to pull all the way out to here, which gives you the additional flexibility of sleeping with your head front to back in the camper or, you know, piling a couple of extra people in. And then over here, just below the bed is a small cabinet, which we've been using for toiletries. Really nice, handy, easily accessible. And then above the bed, we have a vent. This vent does not have a fan in it. The one that is above the kitchen does. Three speeds, Dometic, good for circulating air through the space, especially when you're cooking. And then we have two LED lights, tap dimmable, and then there's one more over the kitchen. Just down below the bed is a seating area. There's a lot of storage underneath all of these seats, such as this one here in the middle. It has got a nice shallow compartment. Underneath it is the water tank. Below me is another storage compartment that has a power setup, so all of the batteries are located in that compartment down below. This dinette area is perfect for eating, obviously, but it also has the additional function of turning into a bed. After I converted it, I'm thinking it's good for one person. Underneath the other side of the dinette chair is some additional storage. This one is really deep and goes all the way to the bottom of the camper. Located on the passenger side of the camper, along with the dinette, is a bunch of other really cool features, such as this massive window. I love how much light this window lets in. You can completely open up the glass, leave the screen, but the screen also can be opened if you see fit, uh, as well as this great big cabinet. We've been using it like a spice cabinet. Makes everything really easily accessible, even when the top down is down, which is really nice feature, as well as the Fiamma crank arm for deploying your awning. A quick note about the actual pop top fabric, which is super durable. In the last two weeks that we've been in here, we rode out a two day long windstorm of over 60 miles an hour and this thing didn't even bat an eye at it. It was a little loud, but everything is totally fine. The exterior, uh, well, the interior facing the camper side is a thermal pack, so it's good for shielding out the heat or the cold, depending on what you're dealing with. And then we've got this blackout layer. Then we've got a clear layer. And then we have a screen. So you can open up the screens and get great airflow through here, uh, or you can close everything up and keep it warm or cool, depending on what you're dealing with. On the passenger side, right next to the rear entrance is this rear handy little compartment which we have been using for shoes as well as one additional light and a little compartment which gives you access to your rear passenger turnbuckle but when you are not accessing it it's great for stashing stuff out of the way. Now that we've been living out of this slide in Granby for the last two weeks we wanted to take you through some of the things that we've noticed and enjoyed about the space. First thing is, it's really nice to have an incredibly capable vehicle, but still have a very comfortable space to come back to in the evening. So you still get your truck bed, you get a capable 4x4 rig, but then you come back here and you have all these really nice amenities to make a full-blown meal and have a great night's sleep. 
We found the Granby to be comfortable for two people to be staying in it full time, but four people and a cat to be hanging out. The dinette is great for four people when there's two people sitting across from each other, one person over by the window, and then another one sitting where I am now. Being that we have been working while we've been staying in this camper, we found that the two 79 amp hour batteries and the 160 watt overland solar panel have been really capable for keeping up with our work demand using the 12 volt plug and an inverter. Now that we've talked about all the things that we loved about the space, there's a couple of things that we didn't love quite as much. And the first one is the two burner stove. The two burner stove in this particular model sits above the countertop even when it's closed. For us, we found that it really kind of took away from the available space that you have to work on, be it work on your computer or chopping up vegetables for dinner at the night. Four Wheel Campers does offer a flush mounted two burner stove, which in our opinion would be a lot better because when the lid is closed, you get a completely flat surface to work on or use however you see fit. The next thing is the sink, and we had a similar issue to it as we did the stove. One of the big things is the faucet is too small. It seems like it sits too close to the back of the sink, so anytime you're doing dishes, you're kind of dumping a lot of water onto the counter. And it also is hard to fine tune exactly how much water you're gonna be putting onto your dishes at any given time, and when you only have 20 gallons, you always wanna be as conservative with that water as humanly possible. Four Wheel Campers does offer a flush mounted sink. And again, we do think that that would be the preferable option because when the lid is down, again, you get more workspace on your counter, but also the faucet is movable in that option. So you can point it where you want it. It's got a better fine tune adjustment on the knob, and then you're not dumping quite so much water on the counter. We don't love how close the refrigerator is to the back door, simply for the reason that you can only open the refrigerator door so wide. And we found that on four by four roads, if something happens to spill in your refrigerator and you need to pull out the drawers or the shelves to clean them, it's really hard to get them out because you can't open that refrigerator door wide enough to slide them out efficiently. And the last thing is not actually a qualm, just something that we noticed. If you have any sort of slide in camper that's attached via a turnbuckle, if you're spending a lot of time on dirt roads, you should keep an eye on those just to make sure they're tight so there's not any additional play in your camper on those roads. In conclusion, we have absolutely enjoyed this Granby slide in. It's so nice to be able to keep your truck bed on your truck, but also have a lot of really nice accommodations no matter where your travels take you. We wanna thank Four Wheel Campers for giving us the opportunity to take the slide in out to test it for ourselves for the last two weeks. It's been an absolute blast and it's taken us to some really incredible places. On the note of traveling in this camper for the last two weeks, we are actually working on a small mini series about our time in this camper and all of the things that we got into. So keep your eyes peeled on our channel for those videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. We really hope that you enjoyed and we'll see you down the road. Tailgate hitch, not a tailgate, a trailer hitch. Starting with the driver's side of the cab, in the front of the camper, which I'm gonna say is face, no, I'm okay. So the dinette is on the passenger side of the camper and as well, okay, so also on this side. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Fiamma awning, uh, s stick, <laughs> what would you call this? Now that we've been living out of the flat, nope, into all of these crazy, ugh, wow. <laughs> wow, an incredibly comfortable space to li live out, ugh, okay. Just kind of is a killed area on the counter when you don't have, oh, how do I say this?